Why is if not A and B faster than if not A or not B? On a whim, I recently tested these two methods with Tiny to see which evaluation method was faster. And got these results. The difference in efficiency is between 1 and 9%, always in favor of, if not, A and B, which is the opposite of what I might expect since I understand that, if not A or not B, we'll evaluate its terms, if not A, and then, if not B, in order, running the if block once it encounters a true expression, and there are no and clauses. In contrast, the an underscore chk method needs to evaluate both clauses before it can return any result to the, if not dot dot, that wraps it. The timing results, however, disprove this understanding. How, then, is the if condition being evaluated? I am perfectly aware of the fact that this degree of micro-optimization is practically, if not completely, pointless. I just want to understand how Python is going about it. For completion's sake, this is how I set up Tiny. Then ran each time eat dot timer dot dot function with dot time eat psych to get the results posted. TL DR The not underscore or underscore CHK function requires two unary operations in addition to two jumps, in the worst case, while the end underscore CHK function only has the two jumps. Again, in the worst case. Details. The dis module to the rescue. The dis module lets you take a look at the Python bytecode disassembly of your code. For example, produces this output. Take a look at the two blocks of Python bytecode that I've marked with the asterisks. Those blocks are your two disassembled functions. Note that and underscore chk only has two jumps, and the calculations in the function are made while deciding whether or not to take the jump. On the other hand, the not underscore or underscore function requires the not operation to be carried out twice in the worst case, in addition to the interpreter deciding whether or not to take the jump. I just noticed this question via your MetaSo question, is it appropriate to share the results of my research toward solving my own minor questions? As you mention in that question, and one of the tags on this question indicates, 
this sort of thing falls into the category of micro-optimization. Ideally, one shouldn't need to worry about such minor performance differences, and as Knuth says, premature optimization is the root of all evil. But I guess it is fun and instructive to investigate such matters, as it can give you a better feel for how Python works under the hood. Mephi's comment prompted me to see what the timing differences were for if less versions of your functions. The results are interesting, Imho. I also took the opportunity to streamline your testing procedure. Output These timings were performed using Python 2.6.6 on a 2 GHz Pentium 4, single core 32 bit, running Mepis 11, a Debian family Linux distro. You'll note that I've avoided using your next tough strategy to get the arguments for each function call and instead I'm passing the args directly, as constants. The time taken to perform next tough should be fairly constant, but it's best to eliminate such overheads when practical, so that the reported time measurements more accurately reflect the performance of the code we're really interested in. Also, it's usual to perform several repetitions of the timing loop and take the minimum value, for you, I generally do 3 to 5 reps. From the timeite docs, Note. It's tempting to calculate mean and standard deviation from the result vector and report these. However, this is not very useful. In a typical case, the lowest value gives a lower bound for how fast your machine can run the given code snippet. Higher values in the result vector are typically not caused by variability in Python's speed, but by other processes interfering with your timing accuracy. So the min of the result is probably the only number you should be interested in. After that, 
you should look at the entire vector and apply common sense rather than statistics. Your meta post says that you want to perform and report on other micro-optimization experiments, so you might be interested in taking a look at some code I posted a few months ago that does time tests on various implementations of the factorial function. I'm going to